Milk Minute, yeah! This is Maureen Farrell. And Heather O'Neill. And this is the Milk Minute. Today we have a very special guest, Lisa Myers. She is the inventor of the series Chill. And if you don't know what that is already, you're about to find out. And it's going to be a game changer, especially if you're a busy mom. I mean, who isn't a busy mom? But if you're one that has to pump at work all the time, this is truly a game changer. And we're going to learn about the product, but we're also going to learn about this incredible woman behind the product. Um, So Lisa, welcome to the Milk Minute. We appreciate you coming here today. Thanks so much. I am so excited to be on your guys' podcast because I love it. I love it so much. I never thought I would be such a participant in this space and like the breastfeeding space, but it's become my passion. And I, um, it's, it's what I think I'm now called to do is to advocate for breastfeeding parents and not, there's just no shame. And like the expectations are that you look after yourself and you do what's best for your baby. And that's like, that's what I'm all about now. So yeah. And then series still, that's part of it. That's, that's why I'm really here in this world, in this space and able to speak to you guys because I, um, real quick, how I got there with my daughter, I quote failed and I was not able to exclusively breastfeed her for, I don't know, a million reasons that I won't probably ever truly understand. Um, what happened, I was in labor for, I always get it mixed up whether it was 54 or 56, but once you get past like, a couple days and a couple nights, like the hours really become less and less meaningful. And so at the end of the ordeal, I had an emergency C-section. And um, after they plucked my daughter from my belly, after, you know, several hours, I, I nursed her, but I didn't know anything about breastfeeding, nor did she. We were both learning like all moms and babies do when they meet each other. And, um, she started crying and she wouldn't stop crying. And I was sure it's because I didn't have enough milk. I came to after surgery because I was so exhausted. I just passed right out. Right. And I came to, and I look up on the board, you know, at the hospital and it's, they list your goals for the day. And the goal was exclusively breastfeed. And I was like, Oh, Oh, I guess that's what I'm going to try to do. Like no one, consulted me. Like I, I, I do want to do that, but it was just kind of like, that's your goal. That's what you're going to do today. And I was like, can I also try to keep myself and the baby alive in whatever way that looks? Um, so yeah, so it was, um, that was like that whole, and then I had my son years later and I went back to work after three months. And, um, this is how we get to series chill at long last. And, I work with all men and I was so proud of myself. I had all the pump parts. I'm like, I'm doing it. This is happening. And I pumped the milk and there was like quite a bit of milk. And I was really pleased with myself. And I'm like, oh no, now what? There's just these little bottles all lined up on my my desk, like right next to, you know, my legal files and my computer. And I'm like, when these guys come in, it's going to be awkward. Not that they aren't supportive, but they're like, ooh, so you're lactating. Like that milk came from, like, I was going to talk to you about a case, but now I think I might, be, yeah. I'll be back in a couple months. Like, is that, is that when we do this? So, yeah. So I like, oh my God. I know. And I just, I'm like, geez, I got to get this piece figured out. Like, this is where I really dropped the ball. And so I go to look for, you know, the, the breast milk the convenient bottle to chill your breast milk and keep it safe. And no, it's not there. Like coolers, lots and lots and lots of coolers, variations from $14 awful ones up to $250 awful ones. And I was like, so I'm not doing that. I don't need another bag. Like that is definitely not what I'm doing. And my friends at work were like, Lisa, that is what there is. I'm like, impossible. The fact that moms have zero choice and breast milk storage technology is stuck in like the stone ages. I mean, everything else in the world is advanced, including breast pumps, thank God. And we're still stuck with like a chemical freeze pack. And if you forget that freeze pack, you're double screwed. So Serious Chill is just a few cubes of ice 
and you put them in wherever you are, whenever is most convenient. It will keep your milk cold. It'll bring it down from body temperature to um, refrigerated temperature in um, a, like a couple minutes, a few minutes, much faster than the coolers. And then it'll keep it there for 20 hours. It's nice to have it like a little discreet, not because it is dirty or gross, but because you're busy at work and you don't want to have to explain to people what it is. Like just, you don't need one more thing to separate you from being a normal person in the office. You know, you're just a pumping mom who's at work. You don't need to be like that person that's always like taking up the space in the lunchroom refrigerator. I don't know. I feel like this is almost the great equalizer for high powered working women. When I had this idea and I saw how much of a need there was for it and I was so outraged it didn't exist, I, you know, went to a couple people that I knew in the office. They looked, couldn't find it, said, well, there's a reason why it probably doesn't exist. You know, this guy, Frank, this, this older, super awesome IP attorney said, well, you had mentioned all of the plastic bags that are disposable and all of the plastic bottles that most moms throw away. There's no future use for them. Nobody is like canning jam with their Medela bottles. So they're just, they become garbage. And then those companies sell more plastic bags that they say you must throw away. You can't sterilize their garbage and more plastic bottles. So there is an incentive in the industry not to have something like Series Chill, which is reusable and is intended to replace all of that plastic. So um, that I was like, okay, well, I'm doing this. When we first discovered Series Chill, both of us had that moment where we were like, why didn't this exist before? Like we're both lactation consultants and we're like, I'm I'm sorry. Why didn't I think of this? I'm so pissed. We weren't chosen. (laughs) <laughs> but my my question is, and I don't mean to like turn this into a negative direction or anything, but I think it's important to address some of the objections that you've had from people. Um, because no doubt, anytime you're innovating and bringing something new to the market, there's going to be people that give you some pushback. So what are some of the things that people have been saying to you about this product that might not be as like awesome as you would have hoped? People would say, would talk about the price, which I can understand. The thing is, is like, it is the absolute best materials in the entire world. Like there are cheaper ways to make this bottle. This is about babies. This is about moms deserving the absolute best. If it's going to cost a little bit more to do a business deal, damn it, I'm doing a business deal. So I, I wanted it to be super high quality, which means that it has to be a little more expensive, but it's actually the same price, a slightly less than like a Yeti or a Hydro Flask that's the same size. I was just going to say that I'm really with you on the price point. Like I am super cheap. We don't have a lot of money. But honestly, when I do spend money, I'm like, okay, this thing better last. If I'm going to buy a thermos for my breast milk, this thing better outlast me. It's going to go in the coffin with me, guys. Yeah, like- <laughs> it better be safe. You know, I don't want it, you know, for the first year, it's great. Yeah. But after the first year, it starts leaking lead into your baby. <laughs> and you're like, no, I don't want that. And then the last thing, what I'm dying to talk to you guys about, and I know that's part of the reason why I'm here. I am constantly accused, not in so many words, but of being a horrible, disgusting manufacturer actively trying to kill babies by misleading moms about whether or not it's safe to add warm breast milk to already chilled breast milk. Yeah, we've been dying to talk to you about this because, of course, you know, we get this question all the time, every day. Do I really have to chill my breast milk before I add it to other cold milk? You know, the thing for me that the research does show is that every time you transfer, you lose more and more of the vitamins, fat, cream, all that stuff on the side. So I like to say if you have a medically healthy baby that is term and doing fine, the least amount of transfers is better. And and we know when you use more containers, you're just increasing the amount of bacteria in there. Like it doesn't matter how well you cleaned it, you know, like just the, the more amount of stuff is going to have more surface exactly. bacteria. They're referencing protocol eight for human milk storage that's put out by the Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine. 
great group of people that overall have a phenomenal bank of research and um, are, have put together guidelines that are very conservative, but are to help moms better understand how to like pump and feed their babies. This part of protocol eight is found in section six or seven of the human milk storage guidelines. And it is, it has no site to any research whatsoever. This piece is this random kind of offhanded comment. And it doesn't mention that there's any danger. It says something along the lines of, when combining breast milk from different pumping sessions, it's best to chill the warm milk before combining it with the already chilled milk. And even you have the CDC and the Mayo Clinic, and they're all saying it's best to um, chill it first. Some of them say it's because it risks increasing bacteria. They're all citing to each other, right? The CDC cites the Mayo Clinic and the Mayo Clinic cites the CDC. And sometimes they cite back to protocol eight, but no one cites to any actual study or any data that reflects that. So when I ask doctors, where did this come from? Dr. Selwagen, who is the coolest woman, and if you can have her on this podcast, she is such a neat person. And her whole, like, what it will say on her epitaph is breast milk is not fragile. Like, she just is so done with this perception that breast milk is fragile, that we have to, like, carefully, carefully, like, care for it. It is so powerful. Heaven forbid the world know what insane properties are in breast milk and the things that it does just all by itself. And we're learning that now, again, because I think there's more women in the space, particularly with COVID, there's more interest overall in like the immunity properties and that. But it is antibacterial and antimicrobial and it actively fights bad bacteria. So Dr. Selwagen, her nickname is Dr. Milkwagen. Her published research um, found that there was actually, um, I think to Maureen's point earlier, less bacteria when women pooled their breast milk. And that has a lot to do with fewer containers. Um, her research found that there were incredible advantages to pulling breast milk, um, all the ones that you've spoken about, and there was no increase in bacteria, which is probably has to do with fewer containers um, and fewer like just open and close and stuff gets in and stuff comes out. Supposedly, this is based on it's it's based on observations with food. So some I was just going to say that. Old, yeah, like me that too. Doctor. It's it's yeah. from food safety guidelines for restaurants. That's yeah, what it's for. for. Soup. So like anybody yeah. anybody who's worked in a restaurant like I have, you look at the gu- guidelines on the wall and it says don't add warm food to cold food. Great. I'm not going to do that with my leftover chickpea salad, but my leftover chickpea salad doesn't have uh, active immune properties that are going to fight off yeah, bad it's bacteria. it's not alive. Also, no. Also, my breast milk is not a leftover food that somebody's already touched, you know? Like, it, it, it's coming directly from my body. It's, it's full of these live immunological components. It has its own active microbiome. You know, it's much more similar to an active fermented food, you know? It has this whole... Um, happy little culture in there that keeps it all very safe and lovely. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I often encourage people when they look at a United States breastfeeding guideline, that seems weird. I tell them to look at the guidelines from countries with better breastfeeding rates than us, which are many and see what they say. Australia is a great one. They have phenomenal breastfeeding rates. They also produce a large amount of studies about lactation. So that's usually my second stop. I'm like, cool. CDC says something whack. Big surprise. Um, Let me just let me just check out this one just to see if that's consistent or um, or not. I think where it comes from is just you start at a place that breast milk is fragile and then you just create fiction and myth out from there. Um, This is what I'm struggling with. I just want the information out there and then moms can make make whatever decision is best for them. But I'm just saying when you look at all the data, 
it says something very different. And when you realize how powerful breast milk is, it doesn't make any sense. 